Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Nate here, and in this video I'll be giving you guys my review of Apple's newly released iPhone 5. I'll start off this review by talking about design. So, if you guys watched my iPhone 5 unboxing video, the first thing that I talked about was how light and how thin this device felt uh, when compared to the iPhone 4S. So on paper, it's 18% thinner and 20% lighter than the 4S, which may not seem like big numbers. However, it does make a drastic difference when you're talking about phones that were already light and fairly thin to begin with. So, I gave my iPhone 5 to a few of my friends who were either an iPhone 4 or 4S owner, and they could also tell there was a significant difference. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about then is the two-tone backing. So with the iPhone 4 or 4S, you either have the option of getting a white or uh, black colored phone. Now you can get the black and slate model, which I have uh, in this video, or the white and silver model. And I think this two-tone backing looks really great, uh, really accents. I think the two colors really accent each other nicely and really helps to add style to the device. Um, this is an aluminum backing here, which feels really great in the hands. Uh, it's very comfortable and provides a very nice finish. And this uh, aluminum backing here, this slate backing, uh, slate colored backing, uh, carries throughout the uh, band on the outside of the device, as you can see there. So, uh, in terms of color and looks, iPhone 5 has done a great job there as well. One thing to mention is that there is no glass covering this aluminum here, so if you do drop it, it's not like it's going to shatter or anything, but there's still that chance that the aluminum can get nicked and reveal its natural silver color, uh, which you may not like, so it's still very wise to invest in some sort of case or maybe uh, some sort of invisible shield here to put on the back. So there's no glass here on the aluminum part, uh, but there is still glass covering the black uh, top and bottom sections right there. So in terms of the glass here on the back, and the glass here on the front, it's much stronger than the glass you would have found on any other iPhone. Uh, there's been a lot of drop tests that have been done, and uh, for normal scenarios, like if you drop it from the hip or head height, uh, there's good chance the screen will not shatter. Um, in most of the drop tests, the only way that people have actually been able to get the screen to shatter is by throwing the iPhone down with a lot of force. So uh, for day-to-day -day use, you should really uh, have a good chance of not having the screen break. But uh, they're still going to have. It's still going to get a lot of nicks here, especially on the band. It's going to reveal the silver color there of the aluminum. Um, so you want to avoid those nicks and stuff that can happen on the sides of the device and the back. As I said before, it's still wise to invest in a good case. Uh, but Apple's really done a great job here with the design. They've made it lighter and thinner more durable and the looks are much better too. Some other things to take note of with the design is Apple has now switched to the nano SIM card here in the iPhone 5. So here's my AT&T nano SIM and then there's the 4S micro SIM that I had. So you can definitely see uh, there is a slight difference in size there. It's not that big. Um, they have removed of that sort of top edge there uh, and you can see that's been sanded out and it's also a little bit uh, thinner too. Next thing I just wanted to show you guys then is the size difference between the lightning dock connector used in the iPhone 5 and the 30 pin dock connector right here that's been used in any other uh, iOS device up until this point. So um, the reason Apple made the switch to a smaller dock connector is just to save room on the inside of the device and in combination with the new nano SIM card size Apple was able to take these two things, save room, and create a device that was lighter and thinner. Uh, so that's what gave us the iPhone 5. So without making those changes it's really not possible to create a device uh, this thin. So I'm not upset at Apple for making the design change it really uh, is what allows technology to move forward making things smaller and faster and stuff like that um, but where I disagree with Apple on is the fact that they're selling their 30 pin to lightning dock connector uh, adapter so that'll allow you to use your iPhone 5 with any of your old 30 pin dock connectors accessories at $29 to me they're trying to make a profit off of these adapters which in my eyes is really dumb you know if they're trying to make the upgrade process from 30 pin to lightning pain free they should be selling these adapters at no profit to them or include a dock uh, uh, adapter for free in the iPhone 5. So um, in my eyes, you know, it's just wrong of them to sell these adapters at such a high price uh, when people may have a lot of accessories and they don't want to have to spend $29 uh, to buy an adapter for every single one of those accessories. So those are just my thoughts on the new lightning connector. Next, I just wanted to take a real quick look at the bottom of the iPhone 5. So the headphone jack has now been moved to the bottom of the device, and to me this makes more sense because if you place the phone in your pocket face down like this, then the headphone jack is facing up towards you. Also, the speaker grill has a redesigned look here, and it also is louder than the speaker on the iPhone 4S. And then, of course, there's the new lightning dock connector port that I was talking to you guys about earlier, and the cable does fit in either direction, unlike with 30-pin, which will only fit correctly uh, one way into the device. Next, I'll talk about the bigger display on the iPhone 
iPhone 5. It's a 4-inch display, uh, which is a half an inch bigger than any other iPhone up until this point. So Apple achieved a bigger display by making the iPhone 5 taller, about 9 millimeters taller than the iPhone 4 or 4S, but they did not make the device wider. The reasoning for doing this is um, it makes the device very easy to use in one hand. So I can still use the iPhone 5 uh, in one hand, type with one hand, you know, uh, maneuver my fingers and my thumb all the way um, from across the device and up and down as well very easily. So Apple's argument is it's a lot easier to use this device in one hand than let's say maybe the Samsung Galaxy S3 with a 4.8 inch display which is very uh, which is a lot wider than the iPhone 5. So um, you know my viewpoint on this is it comes down to personal preference. Having a device that you can't necessarily use in one hand isn't a bad thing if you want to have a big uh, smartphone display. You know if you don't care that you can't use it in one hand then you know our, Apple's argument is invalid to you. You'd rather have that bigger uh, display size. To me I do like to be able to use my phone in one hand. Uh, if I'm looking for a bigger screen I'll probably go to my tablet like the Nexus 7 or my iPad. So that's just my thoughts on it but again that comes down to personal preference if you'd rather have a device that you can't use in one hand um, but has a much bigger display or a device that maybe has a smaller display but you can uh, maneuver it in one hand very easily. So uh, with that added screen real estate Apple has added an additional row of icons here so you have five there and then of course the dock at the bottom. Uh, which is nice to see and it's still a retina display at 326 pixels per inch. And Apple has also improved the color saturation up 44% from the iPhone 4S and I can definitely tell that the colors just seem to pop and be more vibrant here on the iPhone 5. The next thing I'll talk about then is LTE in the iPhone 5. So LTE brings really fast data speeds to your phone which is going to be great if you're downloading a movie, an application, you know, browsing the web, uh, anything like that that uses data is going to be a lot faster now uh, which is great. Android handsets have had it for a while now so Apple Apple is definitely playing catch up uh, in this aspect. Unfortunately, AT&T still doesn't have LTE in my area yet. They should have it by the end of the year. But in the meantime, when I was in Philadelphia over the weekend, I was able to run uh, some speed tests. You can see I got some really great speeds there. 52.56 on the download was my best and 17.86 on the upload. So those are very impressive speeds and are probably faster than most people's home internet connections. So I'm really excited uh, for AT&T to get in my area. And I'll definitely do a live speed test for you guys when that takes place. The next thing I'll talk to you guys about then is performance. So Apple's iPhone 5 includes their new A6 chip, which according to Apple will provide up to twice the performance than the A5 chip found in the iPhone 4S or the A5X chip found in the iPad 3. So Apple's claims are definitely true. If you take a look at Geekbench scores, uh, the iPhone 4S got a score of about 630 and the, I and the iPad 3 about se uh, 790, uh, close to 800. You'll see here the score I got from Geekbench on my iPhone 5, 1693. So very impressive impressive stuff with the new A6 chip which is still on the dual core architecture but it has a three core GPU so hopefully developers will be able to take advantage of this new hardware and design some amazing apps for this stuff. Now these numbers don't really mean a whole lot uh, in day to day usage. You're not really not going to notice that much of a difference I would think between the iPhone 5 and the 4S which the A5 chip is still very fast but I've noticed that certain apps do load up a lot faster. Uh, this device also includes a gigabyte of RAM which should definitely help out uh, in multitasking as well. So this device compared to some of the other high end Android Android devices out there like uh, the Samsung Galaxy S3. It scores very close to it. Uh, if you compare this to the 18, um, any of the United States versions of the Galaxy S3 which only has a dual core processor, I do believe that the uh, iPhone 5 beats it out. But when you compare this to the uh, global version which has a quad core processor and if you have Jelly Bean running on it, uh, I believe that gets around maybe a 17 something. So uh, very close scores and Apple's not one always to have the best performance out there anyway. Their software is very good. So, um, But still that's great to see that Apple has made some uh, significant strides to increase performance on their mobile platform. So the last hardware aspect that I need to talk about with the iPhone 5 then are the cameras. So the front facing camera is now centered here on the front of the device and it can take 720p HD video and take 1.2 megapixel still shot. So if you're a fan of FaceTime or using any other video chatting service on your iPhone, you'll now be able to do that in HD quality, which is great. Now with the rear facing camera here, Apple really hasn't upgraded the hardware that much at all. It's basically the same as what you would have found with the 4S. So the quality hasn't necessarily changed that much, um, but it has better stabilization, especially when you're taking video, which is still at 1080p at 30 frames per second. And it's also much better in low light conditions. So to wrap up this review, I just wanted to quickly mention iOS 6. I've covered a lot of the features in that uh, over the summer with my beta uh, developer preview video. So you guys might want to check those out if you want to see what's new in iOS 6. Um, but there's really nothing that great about it. Uh, Apple's does bring some nice features like Facebook integration, Passbook, Do Not Disturb, and 
and other little things like that. Uh, but there's nothing that I would say is a must have about iOS 6. Now some controversial changes of course in iOS 6 is with maps and the removal of YouTube. Apple of course is breaking off ties with uh, Google especially because of their Android platform. Um, and with YouTube that's not a big deal to me. Luckily YouTube has submitted their, sorry about that, uh, Apple has submitted their YouTube application to the App Store. It works very well and I, I would rather YouTube release their own app that will get updated hopefully every once in a while unlike with Apple which they really never change the uh, YouTube app since its original release in the iPhone uh, in 2007. Now Maps is a different story. Uh, Apple released Maps which has some nice features into it. Flyover has better detail I think than uh, Google's uh, 3D mapping system uh, and I think the Maps performance might be a little bit better than what you had found with Google Maps however the detail is definitely lagging. Uh, Google Maps has been you know worked on for a long time now and it just has gotten better and better and better and more detailed and Apple I think really rushed trying to get their new Maps out here uh, in iOS 6. It definitely wasn't ready for public consumption. The detail is just missing stuff is wrong uh, you know the location of places is just incorrect so I think uh, Apple is giving people um, a, uh, their new mapping service which just really isn't ready for public consumption so if they're removing of a service that was better and including a new service that's worse you know consumers are going to notice that and be angry about it the good news is you can still go on google.com view the maps that way there's rumors that they're going to be supporting us um, sending in their new uh, their own iOS maps application that hopefully uh, will hit the app store soon but no confidence information on that yet. You can download other maps as well like uh, MapQuest or some of the other GPS applications out there and use in the meantime but you know it stinks that Apple's kind of releasing a new feature and marking and advertising it as being really good when it just you know isn't uh, living up to what Google Maps was so uh, hopefully it will improve. I'm gonna give Apple a chance on this but I would say that consumers are still uh, pretty mad about what they've done with that so I think the iPhone 5 overall is an amazing piece of hardware. It's got a lot of great technology in it. It's faster, thinner, lighter. The design is awesome. Um, the cameras are pretty good as well. But, you know, I think that it's still, uh, the hardware is uh, definitely bottlenecked by the software. The software in iOS 6 doesn't bring that many features to take advantage of this new hardware. And I think that Apple really needs to make some strides in their software next year with iOS 7. Uh, focus less on the hardware. The hardware here is great, but, you know, really change some things on iOS. Since uh, iOS was originally introduced, We've still been presented with just rows and rows of icons, you know. Uh, do some other things with the screen, maybe implement widgets or something else, you know, uh, like what Android has to make the experience better, but, uh, you know, still with this great hardware. So overall, I'd probably give the iPhone an 8 or a 9 out of 10. The hardware is great, but as I said, you know, it's definitely bottlenecked by the software. So if you're a fan of the iPhone, you're a fan of iOS, this is going to be a great device for you. If you're coming from the 3GS or the iPhone 4, definitely a worthy upgrade. If you're coming from the iPhone 4S, it's kind of hard to justify paying that early termination fee to upgrade. Um, it does include LTE and a 4-inch screen, which might be very important to you, but you know the camera, the processor, I don't really think it's worth uh, paying an additional fee to upgrade. So those are just my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think about the iPhone 5 in a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.